Hello everybody, today we have a BMW 2006 325 CI. This gentleman came in with his top stuck in the open position and then also his little light, as you can see, is blinking for the convertible top. Now I'm gonna show you something that's really common on these convertible tops. You've probably seen this online as well, but if you have this issue and you're new to this, um, there's a wiring harness that runs along this left side here. And just from all the bending, it will break a wire and cause some weird faults too. If you're gonna interrogate the faults, if you have a scan tool or a diagnostic tool, it'll have some strange faults. That's because it's getting incorrect signals. Um, and this wiring harness here, uh, it's braided. So if you pull it out, uh, you're gonna have to cut it and pull the sheathing back. And you'll see in this section here, uh, there's likely some broken wires just from the bending back and forth. Now, if your top is stuck in that open position, uh, you can pull the rear seat out. And under that rear seat, you're gonna see this module here. There's some cables going to it. Um, this button right here, that's actually to release the hydraulic uh, tension in the system. So the top can move freely. Uh, that little tool right there is if the top is stuck in the closed position, you'll pull that Allen wrench out that looks like a S. And you will take that little cover off, there's an Allen in there, and go uh, and turn it. And that will release these, and that will release these locking hooks right here that are on each side. You can lift the top up. And you can get it in this position and you can access what's going on here. If the top is in the open position, you will need two people to help you pull the top up because you're gonna have to pull this back cover and have someone hold it up for you uh, while there's a person on each side to pull the unit up and out. Now when you do this repair, it is important uh, to do a really clean and tight job because when you go back together, there is not a lot of room movement back and forth and it could likely happen again and actually pinch uh, the next time the customer opens the top. The best thing you can do is a is crimp a butt connector and solder that butt connector uh, nice and cleanly, no extra solder on there, uh, with some very thin heat shrink. You will then use electrical tape. I don't like to use electrical tape, but in this situation, it has a slick coating, and also I can tighten it really nice and tight to shove it inside the original area where it's supposed to lie. Now what I use is a long screwdriver just to prop up the top right here. This is the perfect angle for me to get in here and do my work. I can put a little light in there and get going. Now also what's nice is you want to put something to cover this right here. You might be leaning against it and not realize it and start scratching some things. So these are the kind of butt connectors that we use here. It requires some uh, crimping pliers. Uh, they're widely used in European automotive. And then also some standard heat shrink here. Whoops, dropped one. If you don't have anything like this or that small that you can crimp, uh, don't use any speaker wire crimps, anything like that, because you don't have room for that. You can just solder the wires together. Uh, the reason why I'm using solder is because when this thing moves, it'll actually pull the wires out of these crimps. The main thing for this crimp is just to hold the two together so I can solder it and make a really solid connection. If you do want to use crimps like this, you can find them at pelicanparts.com, most likely. I haven't looked on there, but they have a lot of the factory uh, things like this. These are the crimping pliers I have. Uh, I got them from Matco, but you can kind of get them anywhere. And they have these little different size uh, teeth in there for different size connectors. I'm using the smallest one here because these are small wires, they're really skinny. These, these heat shrink, I like to cut them in half to make them a little shorter. Uh, the main reason for that is so I have more space, uh, but also when you go to solder, these pieces together, it creates so much heat that if it's close to it, uh, they'll shrink on here. So there's not a lot of room to play with, so I just like to cut them in half. I just use some standard wire strippers and about shave about three millimeters off the tip there. If you're gonna solder uh, without using the connections, you can pull it back a little more so it gives you more meat so you don't melt the insulation. 
Also, what you also what you want to watch out for is if you're using a tool or not, you don't want to touch any of these wires together if the battery is connected. So be careful with that. If you're in doubt, then just disconnect the battery. But don't forget on these older cars, uh, when resetting the time, uh, sometimes this little knob will break internally and you can't actually set the time properly. So uh, that's very common, just something to keep in mind there. There we go, everything is crimped, now it's time to solder. Nice and clean soldering. Now for the heat shrink. I will end up putting a little bit of felt tape just to cradle the bottom side so it doesn't scuff. You can see it's going to go in there nicely. Now to put the retaining clip screws back in and try it out. That screw on the back, I forgot to mention earlier, it's a Torx 20. You'll need a T, a Torx 20 bit, T20. All right, let's try it out. Let's see if it works. Let's go closed with it so it can initialize itself. Nothing's happening. Let's go open. Nothing's happening. Oh, here we go. Something's going on here. Right, and we want to make sure the blinking light is off and it is so now let's try to close this guy Beautiful. Is the light off? Yep, it stopped blinking. It looks like it worked. Guys, Mike MD here. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this helps you out. If you have this issue, save yourself a ton of money. You are now a convertible top master. I will see you on the next video. Other known issue why the top may not open all the way is there's some straps inside of here that give tension and they're called tension straps. They're really involved to replace 
but uh, if you move this up, it'll hit the switch so it can continue on in its motion. And if that's your issue, then you need the tension straps replaced. Uh, more than likely, this guy is the culprit that we did already. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that in the trunk, the storage carrier is in the lowered position. If it's in the upright position, it will not allow the top to go down.